Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often trying and tasting and reviewing rare and exotic whiskeys. I'm not sure how rare and exotic this one is, but this is the Buna Haben Cast Strength 12 year old 2023 limited edition 60.1% ABV. Yay! So this is whiskey base 238687. And what am I going to compare it to? Whoops, I almost pulled up the wrong one. My 2022 favorite bottle of the year, 2023. Uh, this will be, and I think it will remain, oh, spoiler, spoiler alert, uh, my favorite single malt whiskey of the year, of this year. So we have here um, whiskey base number 219588. Nine. This is 56.6% of sherry goodness. Now, Buna, actually, Buna Haben, we say Buna as a little bit of an abbreviated name, is um, embracing the batch strength variation. So they know that the 2023 is different than the 2022. They knew that 2022 was different than 2021. So we have now a total of three different years of products from Buna 12 year old and cast strength. I did not pull out my bunker 2021. I have the 23, I have the 22, that's enough at the moment. Now the ranking that I'm going to give this and from, for all I care, you can now turn off. I love the 2022, this wins hands down. This is an A whiskey. The 2023 is a B whiskey. And the 2023, sorry, the 2021 was a uh, B whiskey as well. So um, it well, didn't. It's not an A like this was, but it's definitely a B. So we're up in the Champions Leagues of whiskey. If you don't know my ranking system, A, why haven't you bought it? It's so good. B is buy it. It's the difference. A, why haven't you buy bought it? B, buy it. C, you can buy it if you wish. D, eh, don't really need it. And F, why was the stuff even made? Ah! So this is B whiskey and this is A whiskey. So now the very, very first thing that I recognize is the color. Can you see the difference? This is so much redder, darker, and more luscious than the 2023. Now what I've done is I've actually have, this was the bottle I almost grabbed, the 12 year old, the standard. I poured a little bit of the 12 year old here. This is 46.3%. Basically for each bottle of this, you can get almost two bottles of this. Dilute a whiskey from 60% down to 46.3%. You're gonna have almost double the volume. Not exactly, but almost. And so if this costs 45 euros, which almost does over here, this costs 90 euros, which it almost does over here, um, you're you're at the same rate so you could just buy this and dilute it down to this each time or buy two of these and have the same amount of alcohol in your system which we don't want we should be drinking for pleasure not for the effect on our bodies so i have three different glasses here i have in the back the standard 12 i have in the left my left your right the 2023 and here my right your left i have the 2022. now the official price has gone up by about five pounds so the 2022 used to be around 80 pounds, all right? So over here in Germany, I'm gonna have to pay about 100 for it. I kept, I kept on saying, I'd be willing to pay 100 for this. I'd be willing to pay 100 for this. And the stores listened and said, okay, if Jason's gonna pay 100, then I guess everyone else has to pay 100 as well. So the average price in Germany is somewhere now between 95 and 105 for the 2022. Interesting enough, the biggest online shop in Germany, whiskey.de, DE is Deutschland, which is Germany, asked 108 euros for this. For this, they only ask, and I thought that was kind of interesting, uh, they have a price at the moment of 92 euros. <laughs> so, the newer version is less expensive than the older version. All right, and that despite, in spite of all the inflation and so on. All right, I'm just going to prime myself with the 12 year old on the nose, on the palate, 
it is difficult to find a whiskey in Scotland um, that has that sherry goodness, that has that non-chilled filter, that has that um, natural color and that depth of character at a price which is acceptable, such as the Buna 12. Now, the Edredawa, if you can find the 12 Caledonia, I'm going to pay over here about 20 euros more per bottle for that. So it's not even the same league in the price. There's hardly anything in all of Scotland, in my opinion, that at that price point and at that flavor, texture, and composition and complexity can match Buna 12. So, when two years ago, 2021 basically, Buna 12 um, and came out of cast strength, I, I lost it. I was happy. I was, I was rejoicing. And it was really, really great. And I tried it. I, 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 in 2022 was when it hit Germany. I actually made it the single malt whiskey of the year for me. And then this year, 2023, I have tried this, the 2022 version versus everything else on the, on the, that I've tried. And nothing has compared. Everything else is just pale in comparison to the sherry goodness of this. But to be very honest, the 2023 version of the cast strength is a more fair representation of what Buna 12 should and could be like in the cast strength edition. Let me explain. Buna is a mix of, Buna 12 is a mix of bourbon casks and sherry casks. I'm not sure if they take one sherry cask to maybe three bourbon casks. Um, a sherry cask would be 500 liters, three bourbon casks would be 600 liters. So that work out almost have a little bit more of that, that, that bourbon, but yet the sherry overpowers the bourbon so that it mixes almost right. That's about what I would do. One sherry, but 500 liters for three sherry um, casks. Why did I pick that ratio? I know Ed Ludawa does that ratio for some of their small batch um, bottlings. And so one sherry butt, three sherry, uh, three bourbon barrels. All right. And so what I think happened is with the 2022 is they almost went all the way up to, to one bourbon barrel for one sherry butt. This has too much sherry in it. Not for me, not for my palate, not for many, many people in the world. But um, compared to the standard 12 year old, this is way too much sherry. But I love it. I adore it. This is what I want. And so what they did here is they dialed down the sherry. All those casks used in here are at least 12 years of age. All of the casks were produced, made, distilled, and matured and stored in, uh, on Isla at the um, Bunahaban distillery. So they did everything right. But of course you can mix and you can change and you can vary. And so they tried, at least in my opinion, this year to get something as close as possible to the original recipe of the 12. And here they're like, threw all caution in the wind and just went for the sherry, which I loved. Now, the 2021 version is a little bit closer to the 2023. But in my opinion, the 2023 is a tad bit better than the 2021. But I have not done them back to back. All right, now let's do these back to back. This is still my um, my control whiskey, so I actually have the calibration moment there. On the nose, I get the leather, I get the um, the European oak, I get a little bit of the fruit, but not too much. Here, I get the leather and the sherry, the the plum, the dark cherries, um, just the fruitiness, just pops out and just greets you and just envelops you and just kind of, kind of woos you in. So that's very, very nice. 60.1% versus 56.6. I am not the person that says, hey, it has to be 60 plus percent ABV to be great. Ugh, I'm often happy with 53, 55, 56, 58. This is 56.6 totally a sweet spot for me. So let's try the 2023. I've tried 
ah, 12, 14 different single cast Bunas in my life so far. This would rank up there with some of the best. It's not the best, but it's some of the best. Um, it's amazingly how drinkable 60.1% is with a 12-year-old Buna. There's a little bit of a um, peak of the alcohol at the beginning, of course. Um, and then that chocolatey, um, the chocolate covers some of the fruits. And there's a little bit of a spice, an oak spice, a little bit of an allspice in the back. And um, there's leather um, very close to this and um, a little bit of tobacco leaves rolled in there for good, for good measure. I'm going to read the official tasting notes here. And it says, so um, roasted nuts and spice lead the way with cinnamon and cloves. Um, fading to reveal soft notes of butterscotch, toffee, sultanins, and a gentle hint of coffee. Official tasting notes. Let's go over to the 2022 version and read their official tasting notes. So we have here creamy chocolate covered fruit. That's what I talked about here, but um, all right and nuts followed by cloves nutmegs and subtle saltiness a long a sweet long finish of cocoa and cherries and marzipan here we should have a um lingering notes of cloves hazelnuts and cocoa this just has way more sherry goodness As I said, A, B. All right, um, value for money. I still think if you can buy any of these under 100 euros, do it. Um, this would be, of course, my favorite. I, I have about three or four um, in my shelving unit bunkered away. I have bought two of these. If I have the chance, I would pay 10, 15, even 20 euros more for this than this. I think that says a little bit about my ranking, says a little bit about my viewpoint here. Um, absolutely good. Absolutely fantastic. My personal opinion. So what is your opinion? Have you tried all three of the Buna 12s? Um, what is your favorite Buna product? Please write that down in the comments. Um, I'm still giving this a solid, solid B. Value for money, I'm still going to say, what, 90 euros, I'm gonna say a C. Buy it if you want. This is not something you have to go out and buy. From the value for money, no. From the value of the taste, from the, from the, from the expression, from the powerfulness of the taste, yes. This, I would actually, I think I paid 85 back then for that instead of 92. I would buy this again and again and again. So I think I've made my point clear. Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, and telling others. And I hope you have a very, very good day. And may you always have either the standard Buna 12 in your glass or even something as special as the 2022. All the best. Salancha.